Hi guys, my name is Adam Chow. I'm the program manager at a Clay Art Center and I'm with Judy Schwartz. She is the chair of sculpture at NYU and is also on our board. And we collaborated on this show titled Hot Pots. It is 50 artists within a 100 mile radius of Clay Art Center in Rochester. And we really took the year to look at what's going on in our area. We had a sculpture show that Judy curated. We had an emerging artist show, and we thought, what better way to culminate the whole experience by having artists that build on vessels, the theme of vessels. So, welcome, Judy. Thank you. Pleasure and, to be here. Thanks. So, um, I thought we could just go around and briefly survey the show and talk about what the mix and the feeling is about everything. So. Yeah, we wanted also to really have a good um, mix of hot pots was a hot new idea but a vessel yeah. format. So anything that would be in the vessel would count. So if it held a liquid, or even if it didn't held a liquid, if it held air, we would go for it yeah, too. Yeah. And that was the fun part about it because um, we got this really broad range of work, which uh, does, does qualify as a pot, and they were hot, so we <laughs> went for it. <laughs> so let's take a look. Yeah, so can we talk about maybe, let's see, how about a pot that does hold liquid or something in it and then a pot that does it. Okay. So these two are really good examples. So we have Beth Bolgia, who made a pot that's, I can pick it up, it's glazed on the inside, but not on the outside. Sort of looks like leather, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, um, I, sorry you guys can't feel this, but it's very smooth, uh, but it kind of has that raw, fired clay feel to it. And the way the handles were put on was just so spontaneously done. And it almost looks like a rivet here, the way you would handle leather. So there's a very nice spontaneity to the vessel. And the thinness of the use of the slab is really quite beautiful. It is also um, beautifully thrown. And just having glaze on the inside, which is the most important part where food would be stored, of course really satisfies me as a person who would use it in the kitchen. So I just wanted to talk about this yeah, one. In contrast, this is a Susan Blechner Heller, and she works in Long Island City. This, I don't know if you can see through um, the recording, but it's kind of sparkly. It has kind of a glitter sheen to it, and that's because she uses a clay from New Mexico that has mica powder in it. So she takes this clay and burnishes it, and that really brings out the mica. It's, um, they're like gold flecks in it. And what I love about this piece is that it also reminds you of the Southwest. You know, it has that very um, Mexican feeling, that burnished feeling, but then jazzing it up with that mica, which I think is something quite nice, very fresh. And then it almost looks like one of the cooking pots that come right, out of right, Mexico yeah. too. And so that kind of old with new really made me want to include this piece in the show. If you guys have any questions, just type it in and Nancy will um, read them out loud to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what else can we talk about? You know what I did want to talk about? I think um, one of my favorite pieces in the show. Can I do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. So, Nancy, come on over here. And I want you to look at this sheet of quote piece. Um, it is, to me, all about the vessel because it's the container. The vessel always talked about the, the hollowness inside and it relates to the body. So Sheeta Quo actually then hits you over the head with the concept that it's a body by putting this wonderful Audi belly button in it. <laughs> <Not an Audi. laughs> but what I love about it is that just the pear shape, the fullness of it, it almost looks like it's a bloated balloon. Right. And then to knock it all off, to really knock your socks off, he does this fabulous neck and then reinforces the neck with an incredible handling of wood that's fused to the clay in a way that almost looks like clay, but yet it's another material. And I think this really sort of speaks to the new way of thinking about the material, using other materials. Right, exactly you know, moving over from other disciplines. And this takes a lot of wood technique, too, to make this so beautiful. I really enjoy, you can see inside, there's um, his transition on the inside. 
going from wood to clay, he actually has kind of a trompe texture on the inside to mimic the wood crane on the outside. So it's a very beautiful transition. And then every detail, there's just the skin-like quality right. of the surface. It's not too shiny, but it's not too matte. Right, right. It looks like it has a little s s skin cream on right, it. Right. <laughs> and just another use of great material is I'd like to come over to this hanging mark. Because this also, to me, is an innovative way of um, changing the orientation of a pot. I mean, we always think of the foot and sitting on its base, and then it swells up from that. And if you look all around, everything is sitting on a foot, except this one. So what's happening with this one? Well, it's hanging, first of all. We never had pots hang. And then it's hanging with a cloth, with a mixed media. And the cloth is hand-dyed. It's a menge type of orientation from Japan. And then it's also structures sort of like the shakers because the shakers would hang, you know, their chairs right. so they could dust and clean yeah. and all of that. And so it's like a shaker mixed with Japanese, mixed with contemporary feeling for the, for the vessel. And the vessel is just so voluptuous too. And I love the way the pattern mm -hmm. of the dye fabric is almost like a pattern decoration right. that right. you would see if you were looking through the pattern, right. through the fabric onto the pattern. So if you guys want to look this artist up, it's Nicholas Newcomb, and he did a collaboration with Graham Keegan out in L.A., I believe. Uh, Graham is the indigo dyer, and Nicholas made the pot. And the technique that they use is called furoshiki, and it's how to use cloth to wrap gifts and other materials. So, so another one, why don't we go over to Phyllis um, Cutter? Yep, Phyllis Cutter Sullivan. I love this piece so much, and I'll, I will pick it up so you guys okay. can see it in three dimensions very carefully. So one of the great things about vessels is that, and working with clay generally, that we all have to be conscious of is all the air that has to be within the vessel. And so we're always talking about the interior space. But I think what Phyllis does here is bring us the interior space almost to the outside yeah. so that when you're looking at it, you're almost following in, but then it comes out, out again. again. Not only does it come out, but then the use of the coil gives it such a light and airy feeling that you're really feeling the space by looking through it as well. And I think that's, you know, it's sort of the epitome of the vessel as right, well. Right, absolutely. There's so many ideas here that are about the vessel, um, with all the properties that we as ceramic artists look at. Right. You know, we look at lips, we look at feet, we look at volume, we look at the space inside. But then we also look to, well, how do we individualize the vessel so that it speaks from our heart or our experience? So one of the things, and I know this is a favorite of yours, was this piece here. and. Um, of Dustin Yeager. So Dustin Yeager just moved to New York City from Minneapolis. I hope you're watching Dustin. We really welcome to the area. What better way to say welcome, welcome. than right. being in hot pots? And so uh, what I like about this, and I think what you did, is this personal iconography, this personal kind of way that then people deal with the vessel because then they use the vessel as not just a statement about the vessel, like the way Phyllis did about the air inside, but actually to put symbols and content that reveal his personal life, I think. <laughs> I can only guess, but it's a fabulous use of painting and decals and, and um, so um, there is, I believe, some luster work. And what I really like about this as, I guess, a millennial is that this is my language. This is the internet language and I really respond to it and how um, maybe chaotic the composition is of symbols but somehow it reads as a, a very well orchestrated collage. So if I could go over here, what I really like about um, one of my favorite cuts is the Brian C. Bez piece which I really like against the Phyllis Sullivan. Piece. And this one, I'm not going to pick it up, but maybe you can have a close-up of it, was 3D printed. So along the same lines of internet and digital. And 
we paired it next to the uh, Phyllis Sullivan piece because of how stringy, coil-like it is, and I also love it because it's not precise. A lot of people think that digital technology is about precision, about making medical grade things, and I like how Brian just flipped all of that over on his head and said you can be really sloppy or imprecise or gestural with the same tools. And I really just appreciate that. I appreciate how you can um, kind of read kind of maybe a figure or, or something. Something's there, but you can't quite tell. It's a little bit of a paradolic mind challenge for you. It's also interesting that the technology of printing this way can lead to this kind of um, fun. Um, almost looks like having a cup of Raymond in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and it conjures up, um, but aesthetically I think this this red coil against the black and the gray is just really fabulous because it sets a kind of heaviness to the bottom in all the frivolity that's going up on top. Yeah, it's a nice juxtaposition. I like that. What else can we talk about? Do you guys have any comments? No? None so far? So a favorite of everyone's right now going from something that is dark white to something incredibly colorful is this Tony Moore piece, and this is fired in a wood kiln. In, you can look here, this is a, uh, a portrait of Tony, and it's filled with all of this very deep, deep glass that's very colorful and kind of spills out. And I love how the vessel is actually his head, and it's, 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 the glaze is just pouring out and overflowing. Yeah, it's like a metaphor for your cup runneth over kind of thing. And uh, of course the glass, again, the interjection um, of another material like glass is very effective here. I don't know how it did it, the taking the molten glass and pouring it into that. I'm not sure. It's just quite amazing. But then I sort of like this piece, this rim in relation to that because it almost looks like it's bubbling up. You know, what's coming down and then coming up through. Uh, so the glass acts as a kind of uh, liquid that gives you the sense of it containing. And, um, and it's really very, very nicely done. If you guys want to see up close pictures of this, you can go to clayartcenter.org to our exhibitions page and you can see every piece um, as a standalone picture. Well, I think the show um, does represent a wide variety of ideas, um, incredible uh, range of scale and of the use of the material and use of other materials with the clay, Absolutely. which I think um, is an important way to think about what's happening in our backyard. Right. We also published a uh, catalog to wrap up all five core exhibitions that we have. It's for sale. It's called In Our Backyard. You can contact the front office to get a copy. This show ends November 10th, so please come on by. We're open from Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I think uh, for clay particularly, and um, uh, well, for sculpture generally, to see it firsthand oh, yes. is the most important thing. You cannot, you want to come over and touch, yeah, we allow touch. Yeah. And um, get up close, feel the scale, feel how you feel in relation to the scale. All of these things are important for first-hand real experience. First hand real experience, that's where it's at, right? right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Judy. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks, bye.